how to get some financial data for free using data Nasdaq data link, which has been previously known as Quandle. Nasdaq has acquired that and it is now rebranded as Nasdaq data link. And the other environment that we are going to use is the Google Colab. It is free environment that you can uh, write your Python code. It is based on Jupyter Hub. And so it's it will come very familiar to you if you have used it before. So you don't need to install anything locally and you can write code right away. So, okay, so the first step that we need to do, we need to go to the NASDAQ website. We have to log in. So you log in, you have to create your account if you don't have. So once you're logged in, you have to go to your account settings and you will see your API key, that API key, you can request a new API key if you don't have. So copy that API key, come back to the notebook. And first of all, you need to install a couple of things. You need to run that command that is Python decouple that will use to load your secret keys from your environment. So, and then write your API key here, whatever you have received from your website and run that command. That allows you to write your secret key to the ENV file, which I mean, that is now for my case is important because I don't want to share my secret keys, but you don't have to do it. You can just paste directly your secret key here. And then I'm loading that secret key using the couple module and then and storing into the Nasdaq API variable. So then what I need, I need the Nasdaq data link module. So I run that command. This allows me to install the Nasdaq data link API uh, or the client. So, and then once I have installed it, you can run the import Nasdaq data link and, and then you configure the configuration using your API key. Once you have the API key configured, you can create a DB, which is NASDAQ data link database pointing to that data source. And the data source uh, is essentially is if you Google or search for it here, you, you will see that if you say free, then it's inflation rates and yeah, so you, you, you will see a couple examples what you will get out. And then also you can look at the usage and they will show you with different languages how to get the data, right? I don't think they have updated the page because they still use the old API, the client, which is Quandle, but now it is actually the Nasdaq data link. So, okay, so... So now you call the database and you can see some metadata information like data fields. Then, then you get the DS, like get me the data sets. Um, if you see data sets and I can show you what you get out of it. So the output of this will be a data frame containing all the data sets. For me, I need to get the data for inflation and CPI and for that I need to point to this table, right? And this table you can actually get manually by looking at the different tables here for which country you want to have the data and they will tell you, for example, um, it was on the previous page was better shown like here. That is the key. And that key is then used to get the data information. So what I did, I get the data set and then I have on that table, I have all the the key, uh, the table names, CPI USA, CPI GBA and so on. And then I get the column, which is one, you can see here. I get the, like first I convert it to pandas, then I get the first column, I get it to list, I iterate over each item and I I create my tables, which are at the end, that's the final result. And now over those tables, I iterate again and get the pandas data frame into data CPI or the data inflation, right? I iterate over it and get the entire data, historical data. And then finally we can plot the data and see the results. So 
if you want to plot your PD concat data CPI, so you combine all the CPI data. So you sort the index and you forward fill the data, and then you plot and then you set the size of the your of your canvas 18 to 9, and then you can see the data. Then you can look. Oh, okay, CPI Argentinian is the highest, and then CPA Australia looks also quite high, and so on and so on. And then for the inflation, we can do something similar, but here because of Argentina is quite high inflation rate and then it doesn't really look nice if you don't use the subplots I can show you here so it will not look too good you see and you don't see other results that's why it's actually better to have for that one subplots as true and you can plot each individual country on its own canvas right and then you can look at the data yeah, that's how it works. So you can get any other data out from here. You just can you can remove here, for example. You can see, okay, what are free available data sets. You can get silo real estate data and so on. So there are a couple data sources for free available from data link. Feel free to look at, but that is the starting point for you just to give you an example. Okay, if you have any further questions, please let me know in the comments below. And thank you for watching.